we've already seen their episode so i'm not getting into the details of it we i'm naming those who are here we have manushi and shreya from team sponge the winning team we have sanjana and viritra from uh, team wave and we have snehanshu and anamika from team plus and subhagya and adarsha from the team urban balconies and i have one question for all of you together now which perhaps monolita actually kind of uh, you know gave answers to in the beginning so for all our panelists both teams and organizers this is my question was it the selection of the almost forgotten mulaseri canal site in the city of kochi which contributed greatly to the significance of the competition to landscape architects a matter of chance or the culmination of a process could you share some insights from your experience so i represent team wave so we would like to share our thoughts on the significance of a landscape approach to a competition such as this in two parts first is uh, when we approach the competition what were our thoughts or what did we think were the values that a landscape lens can bring to this competition the other one is uh, now that we are in this side of the competition what are our major uh, takeaways from the landscape study which reinforce the need for a landscape lens in such projects Uh, so elaborating a little on the first part we're looking at a defunct canal in a coastal city in a state which is traversed by a, a biodiversity hotspot such as the western ghats and we also have the presence of the largest estuarine lagoon in india which is the vempanad lake which is in proximity to the canal so looking at these uh, features there definitely exists a need to look at the relationship of the canal to the larger regional blue green network the second part regarding the takeaways from the study uh, this uh, mulaseri canal was primarily constructed for inland mobility so uh, we wanted to establish the role of the defunct canal in the current scenario so this we could do uh, with the landscape study which uh, proved the ecological role which the canal performs which is basically uh, the percolation of the fresh water which tackles saline water ingression and also the canal plays an important role in creating a balance in the estuarine habitat so So uh, the landscape study helped us answer these questions, which uh, laid a base for our study and helped us, uh, which laid a premise for the revival of the canal. Okay, so you, I do understand that the canal was very central to your interest in this competition, which is yeah. part of the question that I was flagging, and that probably evoked a tremendous response that we at least saw in this. Would any of the other panelists like to add something or uh, present their own point of view or experience? Whether from the organizer side or from the participant side. Sure, um, Purmila, this is Manushi here from. Yes, Manushi. Launch. Um, so I would just like to. I'm. I'm not a landscape architect. I'm an urban designer. But I'd just like to bring in our point of view because we are a team of uh, landscape architects, architects, urban designers, sustainable development uh, experts. So um, the un- for us the major. Um, you know the point at which we were really attracted to the brief was the fact that it was laid out for interdisciplinary approach it kind of focused on a lot of these topics already there was mention about blue green infrastructure there was mention about low impact development there's a lot of things that were integrated within the brief that actually called for um, you know teams that were interdisciplinary in nature and also um, most of the issues stated in the brief uh, drove us towards a very landscape driven approach so i think um, definitely i feel like the huge uh, uh, you know the turnout towards the most of the design entries having a strong landscape uh, approach was thanks to the brief in a way yeah thank you so much manushi would someone uh, yes shreya sorry i just want to add to what manushi said um which is that i think one of the most attractive uh, things about it was the opportunity to work in a dense urban framework where uh, we ca- the landscape approach could be used to uh, provide multiple co benefits in other areas as well and i think landscape architects have been very central therefore to this project um but also it allowed for a lot of uh, you know cross sectoral collaboration as manushi mentioned yeah thank you so much shreya any of you the rest of you would like to go ahead adarsh yeah uh, i am adarsh and i represent team urban balconies so for us we were a team of urban designers landscape architects conservation architect uh, gender specialist yes the brief definitely gave a lot of uh, focus on all these various disciplines coming together and contributing and the brief did not give uh, i would say undue weightage to any particular discipline it gave equal weightage to which is probably why 
all of us came together and we thought that yes, this is where all our collective uh, efforts could grow together. And apart from that, uh, somehow or the other, all of us who were working on the design competition either knew about the site, knew that this is one of the most important parts of the city, or uh, somehow or the other uh, were associated with this in the background. So that's what brought us together in this particular Thank you so much. So if any, would any of the other panelists like to contribute or we move ahead? Um, I will actually just add. Yes, Samida, please. Here. Yeah. Um, so actually the choice of the canal, uh, even that comes from a lot of, uh, say, backing of information, like the 2019 Entecochi process that we did, the participatory process, and that uh, we actually directly asked the people of city of Kochi, what are the challenges they face uh, in the city, in the urban realm? And water actually came out to be one of the prominent. Everything in the city, uh, because the uh, the geography and the morphology of the city is such that water is the integral part of it, this way or the other way. So water became came out as the most prominent uh, topic in terms of challenges as well as solution. And hence, we then took that as a uh, as an approach or rather a topic, main focal topic to move ahead with the competition and uh, and then followed the entire process of uh, of the canal networks and uh, how how were they used in the past and how were they I think it, it, the brief actually resonates the challenges what the people themselves face on ground and we tried our best to actually directly kind uh, put that out uh, to the t uh, to the world or, or the fraternity of different disciplines in our country and internationally and ask them to respond to it you know so it was very much like a transparent uh, a transparent approach you know, that uh, that the brief actually was one of the fine uh, you know one of the most important element to connect it from the ground as a, to the experts and the professionals who started working on it yeah thank you so much for your insights all of you samida you and all the others as well and i think the transparent approach that you flagged is something which even went into the political sphere from what dr rajan had mentioned earlier that the pressure that was brought upon on the mayor is something that she did not allow to get in the way of deciding for the jury. So we move on to my next question. And this question is addressed to the panelists from each of our participating teams, each of you four teams. So as participants, what factors did you find in the way the competition was organized, helpful to working together as teams in your own unique way? So which of you teams would like to go first? Uh, hi, Dr. Umriya. This is Sanchana from Team Wave. Um, sure. So this is again uh, kind of building uh, onto uh, the previous uh, questions answers. Uh, it's the way in which the brief was formulated uh, actually was interesting in uh, bringing together a multidisciplinary team. And uh, the brief also uh, uh, lays down very clearly a set of aspirations, uh, which I'm sure were compiled uh, through extensive stakeholder meetings and, uh, uh, and the organizers' efforts. Uh, so the aspirations themselves were quite clear in uh, setting the tone for the competition and uh, letting us decide uh, who we needed to collaborate with in the first place. And uh, at that time, actually, uh, uh, in, uh, in our particular team, uh, we were all uh, situated in different parts, a uh, uh, few of us in the same city, but in different areas. And uh, uh, at the landscape uh, architect on our team, uh, she was actually in a different uh, city, uh, who's Vinitra, who is also here. Um, and uh, we worked with an environmental planner who was also uh, living in the different city at the time. So, uh, however, um, considering uh, different locations, uh, these uh, the distance did not matter uh, at all for us because the competition brief was quite uh, well uh, knit together in terms of the details that were provided for us because uh, for obvious reasons, uh, due to the lockdowns, we were uh, not able to uh, gain any physical access to the site uh, or even request um, our friends or our relatives living in Kochi to, uh, uh, you know, kind of give us some insight, uh, go to the site if necessary, because um, 
that would be uh, a difficult choice to make at that point. So we did not have to actually go to that extent of uh, uh, finding out more information uh, from the ground because we had everything necessary for us. And uh, that made it uh, very interesting because we had photographs that we could linked to the site, we had uh, uh, sections, we had extensive drawings that could uh, support uh, the design decisions. Uh, so that, I guess, in a way, uh, helped us all get together and uh, discuss as if uh, uh, we kind of felt that we actually knew the site because uh, uh, because of the, num uh, the amount of detail uh, that the brief was able to provide. Thank you. So that's very interesting to know. Nitra, you want to add a few words or would we move on to another team? Yeah, I just want to add that the participatory process that they were talking about, that document was also shared with the participants, which actually gave us an insight into the process before the competition itself. Right. Right. That's a very important. So should we move anybody from any other team would like to? Yes, yeah, sure. hi, um, I'm from Team Sponge. So I think one of the things that was um, as uh, uh, as Sanchita, I think, mentioned, um, the I think that the objective of integrated development was a very important, um, you know, marker of how they were thinking. For example, I remember in the brief, uh, we were invited, the flexibility of the brief was important. We were invited to make um, to make uh, suggestions about, you know, policy initiatives as well, uh, which really showed the commitment to cross sectoral think and, you know, um, mu you know, multidisciplinary thinking. Uh, the way the teams were con uh, were constituted, for example, there was a focus on getting a social um, science, uh, you know, social scientist or researcher, as well as a landscape or an allied field um, uh, expert, as well as an architect and urban designer. So I think the the there was very much a focus and 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 the and the other important thing I don't know if you, I I think many of I mean of the top top three teams, I think many of us were actually not established firms. Uh, so I think uh, at the time of applying, so I think it also provided an opening for young practices to enter uh, urban development, which is uh, really crucial and uh, was baked into the uh, uh, structure of the competition. I think the competition really did want to get the best ideas from the broadest possible base and that was uh, reflected in the design. Um, of course, there were other things such as, you know, uh, the user interface of the website was fairly easy to navigate. There were many sources available. Um, but yeah, I think these were some of the key things that allowed the best ideas to come to the surface. Thanks. Thank you, Shreya. Those were very important points that you flagged and particularly, you know, the uh, non-established practices being able to participate. I think it was just not, not just the non-established practices, but also the established practices looked at new ways of participation. And that was also a key to this competition. So, would, uh, which of the two remaining teams would like to go first? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, they've covered some of the most important points. The brief was pretty detailed. There was enough amount of information that was shared. The documentation was thorough. Drawings, photographs, videos, other research documents, all of those were available. Team building was encouraged through the website. The other important aspect was that the FAQ section, when there were questions which were being raised by uh, the team members, they were being addressed quite uh, thoroughly and transparently. And uh, throughout the process, the requirement of a local uh, architect as part of the team, I think, was very crucial. You know, for example, in our case, though we were familiar, some of us were familiar with the site, at some points we did realize that it's better to go back to the site and check some of our thoughts. So the local resources definitely helped over there. And uh, I think the time that was given for the competition uh, was optimum considering the lockdown. Had it not been a lockdown, I would have said some amount of extra time was necessary because uh, the brief definitely puts in a lot of focus in uh, interaction between the team members. And if there are uh, team members sitting across the globe, then there is some amount of time loss that happens. So we were lucky that we were under lockdown and we were able to focus and give a lot of time to the competition within that limited time. Sudhagya, you want to add something? 
yeah and i think the uh, that also helped us to collaborate throughout the globe which was uh, really interesting in our case uh, and uh, that also gave us an opportunity to work 24 by 7 as we said that you know at one point of time we were sleeping but somewhere some other continent someone was working uh, so it did give us that benefit as well so i think the what you flagged both the response to the faqs and the optimum time because it meant that you didn't slack for a minute you kept the pace up and the interest accordingly as well but two very important things and the faqs response you know the fact that somebody back out there was responding back to you despite all these conditions both were very important motivating factors in the success of the competition so thank you so much and uh, team plus would you like to add on as well hi uh, good evening everybody this is anamika from team plus uh, this is myself and uh, mrs sneha chumbakarji uh, today uh, evening uh, well i think uh, one of the things that was uh, very good about this competition was a very simple requirement that uh, any of the winning teams uh, would require to uh, be in a position of, of signing a contract with the organizers in order to execute and there was absolutely no limitations in terms of pre qualification or uh, in terms of how the partnerships or how the cross sectoral teams would be formed so um, uh, as all the speakers before me have also highlighted that the tone of uh, the brief very clearly uh, mentioned that this is the nature of uh, involvement that they're looking at and we found that it was actually uh, it was a very very encouraging aspect and i i would definitely say that um, after a very long time we found uh, an open competition of such nature and one in which uh, which encouraged basically it's such sort of teamwork and uh, the ability to collaborate very easily without getting into any kind of bureaucratic process of having to form jvs or having to have some sort of a pre qualification uh, criteria and things like that um uh, so uh, in in my view that is something that really um that really helped and it was very encouraging um snyanchi so would you like to add something no i wouldn't anamika thank you you carry on yeah so yeah. in fact anamika i think that's an important thing coming from your experienced firm background because i think the having dealt with the government so often and uh, probably been regulated in so many ways the what you highlighted is this particular point which allowed for a lot of you know uh, different ways of working and a lot of uh, let's say in innovation and also along with it so yes, thank you yes. so much thank you so much teams all of you and i'll move on to my next question so my question now is that after having heard what the participants have to say and it goes to the organizers so this is the last question before we move to the audience questions so as organizers and jury were these specific points which have been flagged by our participants in your mind while putting the competition together or was it even a realization during the jury did it happen consciously monrita i would you like to go for that uh well uh, you know because we already as we were uh, wrapping up the uh, ground data collection we were kind of moving into lockdown and we were uh, though we at that point we really didn't have any clue what this yeah. entire covid thing will end up being i think initially we were thinking two weeks three weeks a month a month and a half two months and it just went on and uh, we had to uh, be very agile in our uh, design approach of the brief as well as the way we planned the re- the competition and of course we already had that entire layer of you know how everything is going to be online and all but now this took went into a different dimension really because as we realized the barriers that we had so suddenly i mean um, samitha was supposed to be here for almost uh, i think half the year and she had to pack up and leave because of the lockdown karina was already gone and i was here and we had this entire challenge suddenly that okay so the teams won't be able to visit we have to recreate the uh, entire precinct to the teams many of them might have never visited the site would have just very basic understanding and we obviously uh, were not even sure like right now the teams are saying that some they already most of them knew about the city but for us it was to be open to everybody who 
even if they didn't know the city they should be able to respond in a, in the best most creative manner right so suddenly there was this whole challenge of you know us working online and getting that entire recreation of data from ground by a complete uh, graphical uh, documentation of the uh, precinct of the site of the demographics and uh, extensive uh, online meetings on what all other information that are required requiring several 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 revisions as we fed in more and more data into the process um, and i must uh, like congratulate giz for this very amazing journey they took us through by you know like keeping that format uh, open yet uh, at the same time demanding that those uh, uh, you know different uh, requirements which obviously we hadn't envisioned before covid right because a normal competition the teams we would expect somebody from the team to come and visit and gather a lot of yeah. you know kind of get a sense of the site which is a normal thing that happens suddenly we were thrown into this whole online situation so i think the entire planning which karina actually set the ball rolling with the uh, entire tech side of it took center stage in the uh, uh, suddenly in the in the middle of our design brief creation and i think karina can probably you know talk a little bit more about that and samitha who was working also with the entire database that we had to create for all the information and everything sure thank you so much mamli and karina and samitha would you like to Yes, so I just um, would like to say a few words, maybe about uh, you know this again. It's the the, the tech and the website, and uh, like Monanita said, you know this was a very new situation for everyone. So we were just kind of responding to uh, you know uh, what was on site. So um, a, a lot of uh, the times we we had no precedent to kind of you know follow. uh but it was a, a lot of um, it was a great learning exercise you know for for all of us and and in just kind of being adaptive and responding to everything that was happening uh and i'm really happy to hear from you know everyone that uh, uh the website was accessible and uh, easy to navigate and uh, you know provided people with sufficient uh, information and i think maybe samitha can add a little bit about uh, you know even the the whole uh, the struggles that we faced in terms of uh, you know collecting a lot of this data which uh, you know we as we all know is is a bit also the uh, superb yeah. faq response which we heard from the teams samit i think you yeah. definitely need to talk about <laughs> that yes um yeah the faqs uh so of course i think that uh, basically happened because we were in the lockdown situation what we what the first thing actually what we had to do uh before going to the faqs is that we need because of the lockdown we knew that we have to provide as much information as possible so that people can actually see the site while reading the brief right so, uh, and there was a time then we decided to actually divide the brief into two uh, one was a set that was uh, given out during the registration phase and a new set was shared uh, as an additional data package out uh, just for to the registered team members because that was a data set which we had to kind of you know maintain the sources as well so that was one thing that we didn't envision actually that happened along the process then uh, then also uh, we like the question and answers that we got uh, we realized that because teams were not able to go on site hence there were a lot of questions that were coming so we literally must have got over 1000 questions through the emails uh, that the teams had sent and uh, uh, yeah it took us nights days and nights to actually put them together in a manner that we and we definitely had to be very transparent say that you know we if we don't have information we don't have information because even we were like going through several limitations at the same time but uh, at that time also to answer the faqs i remember the participatory process as i told you like we we managed to network with the locality in few weeks right so that helped us move ahead so during the faqs answering the faqs also we 
remember calling these people again and asking them you know like locals for because we felt like this is information this is user based information and we have to have some backing so we contacted them we asked them uh, all the all these questions as well and get got, gathered answers from them and uh, yeah that was that was one of the crucial moment we actually never imagined that we will receive so many questions uh, for, uh, from through the FAQ so there was if the teams who are here you know that there was one FAQ page which is online and then there was another set of FAQs which were only given to the registered teams so uh, it only they received uh, those uh, answers so that was uh, that was one another uh, element as well and uh, and as monita said that we were actually uh, there were certain things that we knew about one was that there there has to be some local uh, a professional member from in, within the team that was something which we felt because we strongly believe that the locality uh, it's like the reg- national regional and uh, local coming together and hence we felt that there has to be one person from from kochi or from kerala who can actually kind of explain the rest of the members what is the situation like you know so and uh, because we believe that our information is limited like we knew that and hence we felt that whoever has any other information please gather and uh, we also what we did was that uh, we remember that on the facebook page or somewhere on social media we there were people participants were trying to team up and we then hence also try to set up that so whoever wanted to collaborate with teams or members they didn't knew of they could use this platform to collaborate uh, you know so that was the idea and i think the sheer passion and motivation and also to make this project implementable at the end was the driving force to kind of you know adapt and uh, and navigate through the process absolutely so it's that driving force which actually came through which also made you organize us agile to respond to unprecedented challenges which you wouldn't have imagined when you started putting this together in fact in those faqs i remember one situation where finally you said that look this is the maximum we can give you you please go ahead with what we have something like that would come across because i think the canal area was also under lockdown yes. and couldn't be accessed yeah uh, i was just going yeah, yeah sure. i just wanted to uh point out that uh you know in some ways i felt that uh, these restrictions were also opening up new horizons for us because we uh, i think this whole collaboration and uh, we were personally having meetings where every member of the team were in different places because everybody had moved back home to their different hometowns and you know to their home locations and uh across the globe uh, we were coordinating these meetings and uh, the, uh, there was i think there were new ways that we could work which came up because initially i remember even arbanista was planning to come and hold these workshops with us when we were working on the final brief area and suddenly everything moved online and we were working on all these online softwares everybody editing documents together through the night and editing uh, the faq sheet i remember went on and on and it was really a 24/7 thing and all of these were happening simultaneously so we were literally we could see each other editing as we were working and i think these opened out new ways that we could work which was uh, while it was new but it was to me it was extremely interesting right and so uh, yes I, i would just add that uh, people who are seeing us the part uh, the team members we were also as you must be hearing urbanista sophie and marcus and yeah. sahil and rike uh, who were then part of giz so and along with rahul so we had like constant uh, meetings to actually uh, you know to actually take decisions uh, in terms of what what should be the way forward because there were challenges at every step you know so we were like into these uh, meeting modes uh, and like it was there were other i would say brainstorming modes that uh, how should we move forward who should be there who should not be there what should be the criteria even the criteria list we had i think four five meetings just to decide right 
what should be the uh, what should be the experience limit and etc there were various various factors that were involved and uh, when when we were planning for the competition we were actually not comparing this competition with any other competition we were just like basically focused on this because we wanted to deliver something to the city which i think me not being a coachite i eventually became a coachite mm-hmm. uh, and the sheer passion because uh, like there's a different sort of welcoming and understanding of the things that we talk and we do which the coachy administration and uh, members like dr rajan you know easily understand and they know what we are talking about etc so that was uh, something and uh, of course like then mayor also she also supported and we also got support from the coun- then councillors as well so it was it was sheer passion of every one of us who kind of you know uh, yeah p- had managed to put this together and cross all these hurdles that came along so that's really great to hear and it's possible that what may be viewed world over as a very as a period of gloom and negativity was is in fact com- coming out from whatever i hear from you to be an ex- extremely positive experience where you worked innovated and you know got out of that that's what's coming across to me hearing all of you say this i don't know if that's how you'll remember this some years hence but i guess that's at least what's coming across to you Yes. Monica, so would you I, like to also? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to add one thing. Why were we? Why as GIZ we were thrilled to do this? Was to really replace a so-called tendering process of a DPR development. When we go for a formal tender, it has to be anonymous and it has to be really going through a rigorous FAQs and responding. And we always compared it for transparency. We wanted it to really see the light of the day that. and a designer designs a project can walk through all the stages for implementation if it is done in a transparent manner so today the teams have a name but while all this process were done we were always saying team 1 team 2 team number 4032 so they were it was all held anonymously and at the end today i see the faces who are really behind the whole idea of design brief while i think the team of professionals who worked on the design brief i also would like to congratulate you know to this forum to the herbs as well as to urbanista to really jointly work with giz because at the end giz was capacitating the people to really make such more further events you know so this is like real capacity building of all our professionals i'm very sure anybody who participated learned something out of this process you know even if they were there for a very short while and of course it was a full team effort from the elected representatives to the ground stakeholders and to the professionals and at the end if we have a successful process i think in the long run india can move towards people centric development you know in which we would have these kinds of process replacing the mundane tendering process in which you know we do not get design inputs so that's the logic that giz wanted to foster and as samida rightly said there was nothing to follow within india but we looked at all international possible design briefs uh, you know which were done floated in germany what could be the pattern and of course having an experienced firm like urbanista it helped us to really look at opportunities you know because we were too far to even think of meeting them physically so i think covid came as an opportunity to really connect more virtually and the participate also people had more time to work on the desk so i always felt that you know people were restricted to the screen so the website became the powerhouse to really connect people so i think that is how this whole process evolved so thanks for the teams for this continuous that's really, efforts that's yeah. really a wonderful input that you have given the focus on the part of the participating teams and the fact that uh, the circumstances kind of video look everywhere possible to find solutions for and the determination that gis had, had to make this model work in the face of no such model you know existing anywhere i think fatim she is also beaming yes. so i think she wants to say something do go ahead yes yes so i would like to add on to what uh, monica has said so uh, the whole process uh, we are actually documenting and uh, we are planning like gis is planning to produce a document kind of a guide book uh, uh, on how to conduct urban design competition in cities That's so that's yeah so uh, that's a way forward actually uh, for this uh, whole project so this will be documenting and uh, this could be uh, this would be useful for uh, city administrators the um, 
uh, academia and um, other stakeholders who would uh, uh, would like to do uh, similar um, uh, comp- urban design competitions yes thanks that's nice to hear fatim it's nice to hear that giz considers this also as a landmark project in a way you know because based on this you're going ahead to kind of produce a guidebook a manual or whatever you may call it for cities to work and that's a really i mean that's really an interesting thing for us here in india to hear so i think by now we should now move on to our audience questions 